I'm sure I probably have a pair of Julians or Melfords in the back someplace. Okay, we'll call the Williams County Board of County Commissioners Tuesday, April 6, 2021, meeting to order. Beth, will you call roll? Barry? Here. Corey? Here. Bo? Here. David? Here. We have a quorum. We will continue. Let's start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Okay, and we'll ask for forgiveness right away. We're, this is the first round of uh, new audio and video system, and if there are, anything goes haywire, oh well, we're trying. Um, anyway, the, the audio sounds much better already, so that's, that's encouraging. Uh, why don't we start with the consent agenda? What are the wishes of the board? Make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. And David? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Uh, in an effort to uh, take care of some folks that are in the audience right away, let's... Uh, Jump down to new business, number two. Lindsay, if you wouldn't mind. Commissioners, you're being presented with a proclamation for National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week. Whereas emergencies can occur at any time that require police, fire, or emergency medical services, and when an emergency occurs the prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and paramedics is critical to the protection of life and preservation of property. And whereas the safety of law enforcement and firefighters is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who telephone the Upper Missouri River Regional Dispatch Center, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the single vital link for law enforcement, firefighters, and other emergency services providers by monitoring their activities, by radio, providing them information, and helping to ensure their safety. And whereas public safety telecommunicators of the Upper Missouri Re River Regional Dispatch Center have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, provision of emergency services, including emergency medical services, to citizens, and whereas the public safety telecommunicators of the Upper Missouri River Regional Dispatch Center have exhibited compassion, understanding, diligence, and professionalism during the performance of their job in the past year. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Williams County Board of County Commissioners of Williams County, North Dakota, declare the second week of April to be National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Williams County in honor of the individuals whose diligence and professionalism help to keep the Williams County area and its citizens safe. And I believe we have quite a few dispatchers um, in our audience here today. Would you stand and be recognized? <laughs> and what we're looking for is a motion on this, right? Yes. Chairman, I, I would make a motion to uh, approve the proclamation and authorize uh, you to sign it. And personally, thank you guys for all your hard work, too. Wonderful. Is there a second? Oh, second. And for discussion, I will just say this. There's been no busier week than probably last week with all the, and, and continuing on, I'm sure, with all the fires and activity and on top of every normal, everyday emergency that they deal with. So thank you and hats off to you. But any other comments? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Motion passes. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, uh, next we need to open a, uh, we're going to open a public hearing for ordinance number 21-04-06, grant for cemetery maintenance expenses. Before Karen? Before we, oh, oh, am I supposed to? 
You, you don't have to push the time. We don't have yep. to do anything. Nope. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Before you actually even have that, uh, I wanted to talk about the cemetery expense. Sorry. Numbers. Scratch what I said about opening a public hearing. Now. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. All right. So uh, last uh, at the last board meeting, the board approved a grant to the Cow Creek Union Cemetery Association for up to ten thousand dollars to demolish the church building and for a cemetery sign. So in order to formalize that uh, expense, I've drafted two ordinances. One ordinance is specifically rated, related to the Cow Creek grant that you granted, and the other ordinance relates to the possibility of opening it up to other cemeteries. And so you can either go with the reading of the one for Cow Creek or the one for all the cemeteries. But at this point, because my understanding is that the Finance Committee has been talking about this, I, I'm going to recommend that you make a motion to move forward with a reading of the Cow Creek ordinance, and then refer the other ordinance regarding all cemeteries to the Finance Committee for discussion, investigation, or, or recommendation to this board. So with that, I, I need some sort of a motion which ordinance you really want to move forward with. Then, then, then you can open the public hearing on that particular ordinance. So which is which, Karen? Um, okay, there should be, yeah, at the up top left-hand corner that says Cow Creek and the other says all cemeteries. Yeah. Gotcha. Found it. Yeah. Okay. So we're looking to entertain a motion from the commission on which ordinance you'd like to proceed with. Well, I guess uh, my question would probably go to to you and Commissioner Montgomery as the finance board, Wh which way is better for you? I mean, do you do you want everybody coming to you, or do you want us to try to do it all at one time? Because isn't that the recommendation? No, no, no. The, the idea is that is the I guess my recommendation is that we'd have the first reading on the ordinance only related to Cow Creek, and then the issue of whether opening it up to other cemeteries, that issue would go back to the finance committee, and they would have a discussion. So it's not like. It's not like people would come to them for grants. Okay, you know, I misunderstood. Whether or not, you know. Sorry. Yeah. So, Karen, Sorry. today we're only dealing with the Cow, Cow Creek request. I, if that's what you want, yes. Yeah. And that's what you would recommend? Yes, yes, I would. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll make that a motion that we proceed forward with the uh, uh, Cow Creek uh, Cemetery request. Okay, we have a motion uh, in support of the Cow Creek, Cow Creek Union Cemetery Ordinance. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thank you. So now I would just like to know with the, regarding the other cemeteries, is that something you want to just sort of kick back to the finance board to have a discussion about or? So can you just make a motion to just kick that back to the finance committee about other cemeteries for discussion and could could well I guess my opinion would be Karen that and commissioners that I guess what we do for one I think we should do for all. That's yeah, just my but opinion, would, so. wouldn't it be? Shouldn't we wait till we get a request, or, or wouldn't that make more sense? If you this. If you get a request, then you can kind of jump on it sort of right away. I mean, because if you get a request, then, and you don't do something with this ordinance applying to all cemeteries, then we'd have to go through this process again, just like we're going to do for Cow Creek. So it's best that if you're willing to do, open that up to other cemeteries to do an ordinance right now, really. So Karen, help me understand, if, if, if we don't do this ordinance for all cemeteries, every request that we get, we would have to go through a public hearing and then if we if we do this all as a blanket one, all the requests would have to do is just come to this board for approval, correct? Uh, yeah. Yes, in part, yes and no. If you get another request, you would only really have to go through this one more time because if, I, if you open it up to other cemeteries, then I would draft an ordinance that would, you would, would use that ordinance for all cemeteries, and so we'd only have to do that once. Yep, yep, yep. Do we need a motion for that for you? So I guess the... She's looking, you would make a motion to basically transfer this ordinance to the finance committee for further review. Is that what you need? 
that's what I'll do. Yeah, the one regarding the all cemeteries, yes. So we have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? So, yeah. Um, why does it have to go back to the Finance Committee? Because I, I happen to agree with Commissioner Montgomery. If we're going to do it for one, we're going to do it for all, and you can't unring a bell. I'm assuming there's other people that are taking care of cemeteries that might be paying attention to this. So I would say we just move on, move on and get it done. Karen, you would draft a different ordinance for this, right? Yep. So that in that, that ordinance would come to us before we have, so we can go through it? Before the public hearing, so that I mean, because I mean, I'm assuming that Corey, I think for the finance committee's sake, the recommendation to the to the board would be: is there a certain dollar amount or a cap or or something in there that we would want to put in there so that we don't have, you know, nothing in there and all of a sudden we get a request for whatever. Christy's been involved with this as well. Do you have any comments that you want to add to it, Christy, at all? Okay. Yes, I was under the impression the only reason we were doing this for Calgary because are we not in charge of their township we, and are kind of the keeper of their funds? We are for the township, but this cemetery property is not owned by the township. It's ran by a nonprofit organization, so that's why we have to do this. The so, Karen, could the cemeteries could, will have their own cemetery board but I, I would imagine there's some of them out in the country that no longer have a operating board I would assume could this motion Karen be amended that you draft the ordinance and then you you go through it with the Finance Committee and the Finance Committee then makes a recommendation to the committee or the Commission I just wanted to, I just wanted to reiterate that an abandoned cemetery is something the county commissioners can take care of from the general fund. Perfect. Thank you, Christy. Okay, so we have uh, we have open discussion on a motion to support the uh, Cow Creek. Um, no, you already passed the motion to have the first reading on the Cow Creek one. The motion, I believe, before the board right now is to push this back to oh, the that's right. Sorry. All cemetery one back to the finance committee. Thanks for getting me up to speed. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe so, a second on the motion. Yeah, there's so, a second. Yep, yep. And, and we're in discussion, and is there any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Bo. Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Motion passes. Okay, thank you. Now you can uh, have the public hearing on the first reading of the ordinance 2021-04-06 regarding the Cal Creek Cemetery expenses. So all you have to do is just read the title of the ordinance and then open up for public comment. Okay, thank you. All right, we'll open the public hearing on an ordinance authorizing grant to Cow Creek Union Cemetery Association for Cemetery Maintenance and Upkeep. So we'll ask for comment from the public. Any comments from the public? Second uh, request for any comments from the public. Okay, third and final request for any comments from the public. Okay, we'll close the public hearing and now we'll open it up for... Nothing. Nothing? You're, you're done now, yeah. I don't no, that's right, we don't need any motions after no, that, that's we'll right. We'll take care of that. So now it'll be published in the paper once and then you'll have the second reading and then if you want to adopt it, they'll be on May 4th. So because we have to allow 20 days between publication and the second reading, so... Perfect. Yes, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. Uh, all right. Moving on to uh, 
We got everything taken care of for new business. Let's go ahead and go on to unfinished business. Number one, masks. <laughs> Do we want to change our current dealing with masks? We're just at recommended now, aren't we? I guess I don't see any reason to change it. If it's recommended, it's not. We're we're not making anybody do it. If things stay apart. Just move, go on as usual. All right, masks are taken care of. All right, moving on to number two of unfinished business: U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service acquisition uh, proposal. Who's dealing with this, Beth? Barry brought this up again because the U.S. Fish and Wildlife would like something a little bit more than you guys were in favor of it. So I think what we should do is on the second page of this, there is, as soon as I get to it, you guys each sign it and you... Uh, Check by an approval of the appro approval of the proposal or disapprove, and then you sign it, and then I will send it in to them. Because Barry, I is think the you guys landowner in favor of this? Any. What is, is the landowner the the M and S Willis Trust in favor of this acquisition? Yeah, he's the one that started the process, and it's well, we're you know you're dealing with. Uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife things are a little complicated, so that's that's what the, I, I thought. We, I thought just us approving it or not having a problem with it at our last meeting would have been good enough, but they need a paper trail. So this is the second step in a hundred-step process. Okay, so we need a motion to support the signing of this document. I would assume. Well, we already had a motion last time to approve it. This is just this is just a paper. follow up on it that we didn't do last time. Okay, so we no no motion required. Just sign away. Yep, I'll bring it to you guys before you leave. Perfect. All right, moving on, planning and zoning. Good morning. Good morning, Commissioners. Sam Miller with County Planning. Morning, Sam. Morning. So first on the agenda, we have LEU-0215-20. Mr. Vinden is requesting a conditional use permit for an additional single-family dwelling on a 160-acre parcel. This parcel is currently zoned agricultural. Um, this is the property. This came before you, I believe, two meetings ago um, for the Barranco brothers were requesting to store their temporary office trailers for the 1804 um, expansion project. So the Barranco brothers did apply for a temporary use permit to store those office trailers on Mr. Vinden, uh, Mr. Rieger's property. Mr. Vinden has a contract um, for deed with Mr. Rieger. Um, they were approved for a temporary use permit until November of this year when they uh, believe the construction will be wrapped up. So um, we wanted to get them into compliance before Mr. Vinden's request for the additional dwelling could move forward. So that's what you see today. Um, the Planning and Zoning Commission heard this in March and had the following conditions, adherence to the Williams County Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Regulations, and to obtain building permits and inspections as required by the current ND State Building Code. Okay. Any questions, comments? And if not, what are the wishes of the board? 
I would move to approve following planning zoning's recommendations. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. Motion passes. Next on the agenda is LU-0242-20. Miss um, Anderson is requesting a zone change to rural residential for a proposed 16-acre lot. Um, the parent parcel is about 100 acres, as you can see on the screen. They are proposing a three-lot minor subdivision. Two of the parcels will be um, at least 40 acres, so they'll remain in the Agricultural Zoning District. One of the parcels, the 16-acre parcel, is too small to conform to that Agricultural Zoning District, so that's what the request for the Rural Residential uh, Zoning District is before you today. The purpose of this is just to place single-family homes. Um, right now, there's only one proposed for one of the agricultural parcels, and that's Miss Anderson. The Planning and Zoning Commission voted 6-0 to zero to recommend approval of the request with the following conditions, successful completion of the minor subdivision and adherence to the Williams County Zoning Ordinance and Subdivision Regulations. Okay. Any questions, comments? And if not, what are the wishes of the board? I would make a motion to approve following the recommendations of Planning and Zoning. Is there a second? I'll second it. Any additional discussion? Mayor Nunn, Beth, roll call vote. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Next is LU-0017-21. Mr. Steernagel is requesting a conditional use permit for the storage of bulk fuel for sale on a six-acre parcel. The property is currently zoned industrial. Um, that It currently falls within our old zoning classifications. It will be updated to either light industrial or heavier industrial. We'll have to... Um, we haven't confirmed that with the... Um, company that we're working with to update our zoning map, but regardless, a conditional use permit uh, for the bulk fuel storage is acceptable in either zoning classification. Um, the, the proposal is for one 60,000 gallon propane storage tank to be installed in the northwest corner of the property. At the March 18th Planning and Zoning Commission, Commissioner Kalyle spoke on behalf of the Williston Township. This is the township that this property falls within. There was a recommendation of denial until further information was provided. Um, two of the issues that were raised at the Planning and Zoning were the concern for added truck traffic and the size of the proposed tank. So in response to that, um, there's a condition in here for them, the applicant, to only access the site off of 49th Street, and that seemed to be sufficient uh, for Commissioner Kalisle. And then also staff reached out to um, Mike Smith, our Emergency Management Director for Williams County, just in, in regard to the tank size and the location of the tanks. He basically just reiterated that the applicant will have to file the North Dakota Tier 2 report for hazardous chemicals preparedness and response with ND. Department of Emergency Services, and with that filing, we're just aware of where the tank's location is, and they'll have to follow all of the precautions that come along with filing with that agency. So we did make that a condition of this conditional use request, and that seemed to um, uh, address all of the issues that were raised at Planning and Zoning. So with that, uh, Planning and Zoning Commission voted 6-0 to zero to recommend approval of the project with the four conditions listed in your packet. One of those includes that filing of the Tier 2 report for hazardous chemicals. And then number four is the site access off of 49th Street. Okay, any comments or questions? And if not, what are the wishes of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the request and follow the recommendations of the Planning and Zoning Commission. 
Okay. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Next on the agenda is LU-0019-21. Uh, Mr. and Ms. Spence are requesting a zone change to urban residential for two proposed two-acre lots. Uh, the applicant is currently working through the resubdivision process. The parent parcel is located in the agricultural zoning district. However, the two proposed lots will not meet the minimum acreage required for that district. The intended use of the newly created lots will be for construction of single-family homes, uh, for the applicant's children. Staff has determined that urban residential is the most appropriate zoning district. At the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, the commissioners voted 6 to 0 to recommend approval of the project with the following conditions. Successful completion of the subdivision process, adherence to the Williams County Zoning Ordinance and subdivision regulations, as well as an access road that must be constructed and approved by the Williams County Engineer prior to construction of the newly created lots. A maintenance agreement for this proposed access shall also be recorded. And that's just based on the lot configuration that was requested of the applicants. Okay. Any comments from the applicant or anybody else? Okay. What are the wishes of the board? I'd move to approve following planning zoning's recommendations. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Okay, motion passes. And then finally, um, in front of you, SP-0008-21. This is a resubdivision request. So we're just looking for authorization from the chairman to sign the plat. Um, we did receive a township letter from Buford Township in response to our, uh, we always solicit comment for subdivisions as well as land use. Um, they, their comment was in regard to what's being proposed on the land use side of things. So we reached out to the township to kind of clarify this is just the resubdivision. So basically what they're requesting to do right now is to combine the two lots into one lot. We haven't received an application for the land use yet. The township will be getting um, a township comment form when we receive an application for the land use. Uh, so I just reiterated that to the chairman. And I'll, I just wanted to include her comment in the staff packet, but it doesn't really pertain to the resubdivision right now. Okay. Any comments, questions? Okay, what are the wishes of the board? Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve and authorize the chairman to sign. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Um, Report of committee and boards. We're moving to number one, behavioral health grant application committee. Lindsay, that's you. Okay, today's the day. It certainly is. All right, so today I have the recommendation for you from um, the behavioral health grant application review committee. <clears throat> 
Williams County received 19 applications for the behavioral health grant, totaling $7,274,674.58. The applications came from longstanding service providers in the community, new providers, and organizations located in other parts of North Dakota. The applications were insightful, thoughtful, and we really appreciate the time that providers took to submit the applications. The Behavioral Health Grant Application Review Committee met on March 19th, March 24th, and March 31st to review the applications. Per the grant program rules, there was a basic criteria for the applications to meet for them to be eligible. Beyond that, the committee discussed and assessed the applicants based on different elements of their applications. These included things like the ages served, the types of insurance the organization accepted, the populations that they served, how long they had been in business, the types of services they offered, and how those services were going to be added to, increased, or enhanced, the use of additional funding sources or cost share and backing of the organization, and the proportion of cost to the longevity of awards. Overall, we tried to create a well-rounded recommendation. The committee recommends partial awards for three organizations that aim to increase the availability of in-person and telehealth, mental health, and addiction services for all ages in all parts of Williams County, to grow the behavioral health workforce, to expand the availability of services through telehealth and appointment availability on weekends, and increase the community offerings of anger management and domestic violence classes, a gap left by the closing of Lutheran Social Services. Included in this recommendation is also funding, as recommended by the committee, for providing services outside of Williston. The majority of the applications uh, are lo were located here in Williston, with the exception of two. So with that being said, um, the three partial awards that the committee recommends is for Chatter Pediatric Therapy in an amount of $438,000, for incentives over hiring one or more student supervisors, mental health therapists, a mental health nurse practitioner, and a psychologist, as well as dollars for services to be spent on providing mental health services outside of Williston. Committee recommends $447,000 for Eckert Youth Homes to be spent on expanded um, rental outpatient space and personnel for a licensed counselor and a case manager, and also uh, dollars for services for providing um, outside of the city of Williston. The third recommendation is for Montgomery Counseling Services in the amount of $115,000 to be applied towards equipment for expanding and enhancing their telehealth, personnel for a counselor to offer weekend programming, and for additional training. Uh, by doing the partial grants, we were able to do um, three different entities um, that serve all ages. So whether, you know, some of them only serve adults, some of them um, serve all ages. Um, also covering both mental health and addiction, which is encompassed by the definition of behavioral health. With all of that being said, um, there are other considerations that the committee wanted to also make in addition to um, those three initial recommendations. Um, and one of them has to do with the behavioral health in schools, and that's how the idea of the additional funding um, for providing the services outside of the city of Williston kind of came about. Um, there was an application for wanting to have a, a behavioral health provider specifically for schools, um, which, we see, which we saw and heard um, the, the need for. Um, and so with the incorporation of the recommendation to provide services outside of Williston, um, we would hope that those dollars would be used to collaborate with our rural schools, um, as well as with other medical facilities in the county, such as in Ray and Tioga, um, to be able to provide services possibly there. Um, the recommendation also includes um, if additional funding was available, um, the additional consideration could be made for Volk Human Services and the application from Katie Shannon. And then all with being said, um, for any applicant that was not selected, there really wasn't a bad one in the bunch. And so we don't want to leave them um, with nothing. And so uh, the intent would be for anyone who is not selected that we provide them with a list of resources where they could find additional funding sources, um, assistance with recruiting and hiring. Uh, last week I met with Williston Economic Development just to kind of prep them that there might be some people coming their way um, and they're more than happy and willing to help, especially from the small business office as well because um, we want to make sure that people are able to, to meet their goals. So that was a lot. Um, but the, the primary recommendation then being for those partial awards for, for Chatter, um, Eckert, and Montgomery Counseling Services, and then additional considerations um, for you to make. 
Excellent. And I and, uh, just want to take time to thank you for all the diligence you put into this and uh, extra hard work. And it, it was a well-run, very organized process that we went through and in, in a difficult one to, to select these, these people. So thank you very much, Lindsay, for all the hard work on this. Thanks. Okay, I'll turn it over to the board. Me, uh, also thank Lindsay and uh, the committee. I know you guys put a lot of time, effort, especially you, Lindsay. I think this is something we've been working on, as I said before, what, three years at least, I'm guessing. So kudos to you. Uh, I'd just like to add one thing, if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, after reading uh, Lindsay's email and going through it and knowing that we have a tremendous need out here, uh, and, and pleasantly surprised by the number of applicants, uh, I started thinking, is there a way that this board could help with more funding for additional grants to begin the process for some of these because we don't know where this is going to go in the future. Uh, if they start now, it, it, it means that much more services to the uh, members of the the uh, county. So, in short, what I did was looked at the uh, county reserve fund, and I've always been of the belief that we need to have a good reserve in our, in our county uh, for future unexpected expenses or turn of events. And our current uh, County Reserve is at $31.2 million. And uh, I've always been comfortable with a $30 million amount for some reason. It gives us about two years of general fund uh, reserves in case of something downturns, whatever. So I, in visiting, I then called uh, Lindsay and asked her to put together some ideas and suggestions where if this board could look at adding another $1.2 million to these grants, uh, this go round, And Lindsay, uh, thank you very much. You worked diligently on a short period of time and came up with a, a, a solution that, uh, that the, uh, I think would help uh, based on recommendations from, from as she mentioned, uh, from the committee. So with that amount, uh, <clears throat> the, what she came up with uh, was uh, chatter pediatric therapy at uh, 549,000, Eckert Youth Homes at 547,000, uh, Montgomery Counseling at 165. And by the way, for a matter of the record, I am not affiliated with any of these uh, grant applicants. Uh, Katie Shannon at $500,000. Volk Human Services at 154,562, Prism Services at 112,983, and then uh, transferring $89,455 uh, to the Sheriff's Office for their continued uh, services with, was it RNC? Oh. Yeah, sorry, I, I skipped over that part on the additional considerations. Um, the other one was for choice recovery uh, counseling, which okay. previously has been discussing um, or had discussed with the sheriff's office providing programming in the correctional center um, and then also looking at providing um, housing um, for a different uh, for different groups of folks here in the county. And while we, the application was good, um, the programming at the correctional center would come at the cost of the counselor's current caseload, and we didn't want to reduce services while also simultaneously adding them. So this would be able to provide the sheriff's office with a little bit more flexibility in working with Choice Recovery to find a, a solution that works um, in which we don't have to lose services while also gaining services. Um, and then also on the, the housing note to be able to work with um, the counselor with um, choice recovery to see if there's some alternative solutions for, for meeting those needs as well. So I apologize. That was on the sheet. And that's where that the additional transfer would yes. be able to cover. Thank you, Lindsay. So, gentlemen, that totals 2,118,000 between the two uh, dollar amounts. The 1 million that we received from the uh, uh, public safety uh, sales tax and uh, 1.8 from the uh, 
transferring from the uh, county reserves. So that's where that's at. So I will certainly, I guess, and I'm sure Lindsay will, and Steve, you're on the committee, uh, entertain any other questions, I guess. And I'll just add the note about PRISM. Um, so that wasn't in the initial rec initial recommendation, um, but in discussion with Commissioner Montgomery, um, the just the application of PRISM was obviously discussed by the, the committee, but with regards to the public safety 1% money, you know, there was only a million dollars to go around, and so really in thinking about the scope and context of it, um, PRISM is a dance company in town that... Um, actually works with autistic and Down syndrome children and other children with special needs um, in a different way of therapeutic um, offering. So it was a little bit outside of the scope of the public safety um, that we were initially dealing with with the 1%, um, but by opening up with the county reserve, um, it was just a different consideration for what was kind of a unique um, application. That was for Volk Human Services. And essentially for those two, the Montgomery Counseling Services and the Volk Human Services with not the full grant amount is just not including the uh, cost that they had requested for marketing. Um, marketing is definitely important, but just in terms of the, the grant dollars and thinking of scope, it didn't necessarily apply. Perfect. Just one comment. Uh, I just... Uh, Hats off to you, Commissioner Montgomery, for uh, thinking outside the box and and uh, coming up with a solution to to add to the pot that of of need that's out there. And uh, and I applaud you in in your efforts here. And and uh, just look to the rest of the commission as to where you're at. A uh, quick question: um, You said some of it's outside of the city. Which ones? Okay, so. Um so two applications were located outside of the city. So we had one from the collaboration of rural schools and then one um, from a medical center in Ray. So neither of those were ended up being recommended um, for the grant award. And because of that, and because we want to ensure that services are actually provided outside of Williston, that's where the committee came up with the idea of the additional funding um, to provide specifically for Chatter and Eckert to give services outside of Williston. So those dollars could be used towards rental space. So whether they rent clinic space, say like at Tioga Medical Center to provide a counselor for once a week, um, working with the schools possibly to provide services within the school, but we would be able to help facilitate the collaboration between the needs in those communities with these providers. Um, the capacity for them to do it, um, we did ask that as a follow-up question during the review process if they would be willing to, to do something like that. Um, and also, Chatter was the only application that indicated they were already providing services outside of Williston, and that's via telehealth, um, that they are already providing them in Alamo, Wild Rose, a couple other cities outside of town. Um, and so that was something that the committee saw as a way of providing also a more specific need. Um, the public schools that had requested um, funding for the behavioral health provider, you would have one person serving three schools, and not every, not one person, one person can't solve everything. Um, and so our hope would be by um, working with individual or organizations like Chatter and Eckert, you would be able to balance mental health needs with other types of therapeutic needs, with addiction needs, and being able to offer them a little bit more um, variety. And then because there is no free lunch, um, we wanted to be able to provide some financial backing to um, fulfill what we would request of them. I think it might be important too, uh, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners, to point out that the uh, recently passed and signed and approved new CARES Act uh, included funds for counties across the country and through the National Association of Counties and the North Dakota Association of Counties, uh, Williams County's share is approximately $7.2, $7.3 million. And I would tend to believe and hope that some of those funds can be used for these behavioral grants in the future. This is my personal opinion. I'm sure that obviously I think all the details have to be worked out with the federal government on how that money can be spent. But I, I guess common sense would tell me that with the pandemic and all the behavioral health issues that have happened because of this pandemic, some of that money should be able to be used for future grants. So that's just my opinion and an FYI. Because I believe, Lindsay, correct me if I'm wrong, I think you saw the email also that from Terry 
uh, at the North Dakota Association of Counties that the funds are going to be dis supposed to, half of them, I believe, are to be dispersed within 60 days of it being signed by the president and the other half within a year. So something to keep in mind for future reference. And I think it's important to point out we had representation from uh, Williams County throughout, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so just as a reminder, the committee was comprised of Commissioner Kemp, Sheriff Quandy, Holly Snelling is the director of uh, North Star, um, Alicia Oster, who's the licensed social worker with Ray Public Schools, and Travis Lesmeister from Tioga Ambulance. So uh, Travis and Alicia were able to add a lot of um, good perspective um, from other parts of the county as al and also just in terms of um, the school system and our youth and, and what they're they're seeing on a day-to-day -day basis. And same with Holly um, through the human service zone. I mean, that's the hard part too. You're never going to solve everyone's problem and you're never going to meet all their needs, but we wanted to be as diverse as possible um, and being able to offer some sort of a solution or at least a starting point. Yeah, and I just wanted to make... Right. Um, I just wanted to make sure that it, everybody understands. We, we we thought it was a very difficult challenge to work through some of these, and we were concerned about overload um, with these other requests from from the consolidate or the school consortium. Right. So there's there was a lot of careful consideration put into it. And I'd say from a staffing standpoint as well, one of the biggest challenges with behavioral health is bringing providers to our area, and that was something that stood out from both. The, that's from both Ecker and Chatter's um, applications is their hiring strategy. Um, Chatter is a feeder program for the University of North Dakota Psychology Program, and um, Eckert has been entertaining um, quite a few interns as well. And that was really important in terms of being able to grow the workforce and creating a structure to bring in new people um, and to kind of tamper a little bit the hiring from each other across town and infuse with new talent and encourage them to stay. And I think that that um, is also a community responsibility that we all work together to be able to um, ensure that these providers want to stay here as well. Any additional comments, questions? Mr. Chairman, I'll certainly make a motion if that's okay to move this forward one way or another that uh, we approve the uh, Grant request from the committee with the additional request of $1.18 million for a total of $2.18 million and that the 1.8 uh, additional funds uh, be transferred from the general fund into the, uh, to the grant, uh, behavioral grant. So just for clarification, 1.118 and that would be coming from County Reserve? Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. Is there a second? Yeah, I will second that. Any additional discussion? I, I just have a question. Mm -hmm. um, how is the follow-up done? How, how do they report and tell us how these are going? Because I think that's as important as anything on this. I mean, this is, this is wonderful, but how are we following up? So now the real work begins. Uh, Karen and I had previously worked together on a template for an agreement. Um, so the way that the funds will be dispersed and what they are supposed to be spent on will be part of that agreement. And then within three, six, and 12 months of receiving the, of actually receiving the funds, um, they are to report and we will provide, yeah, within three, six, and 12 months of receipt of funds, the awardee must provide a statement to the Board of County Commissioners explaining the impact the funds have had on their ability to add, increase, or enhance behavioral health services in Williams County. Um, I will be responsible for tracking and maintaining those impact statements. Um, and we'll provide a template to them um, once we work through the funding part as well. And also from a funding perspective, um, there's a few exceptions, but essentially they don't get the funding until they expend the dollars. Um, the exceptions are mostly around um, space and personnel. So if they are using the dollars to pay the salary of a personnel, we could pay that a little bit beforehand so they can make payroll. Um, but otherwise, until they expend the funds, um, they will not actually receive the funding. I think it's in, uh, uh, Commissioner Hansen points out something that we desired to do from the get-go, which was the ability to report back, and you know, particularly to this board, but also to the 
one percent public safety board yep. uh, with their contributions. So, and much like the school study that we did, um, we will also put this on the website in terms of who we awarded them to. Um, and then, as an extension of this project, something that we had been kind of talking about in terms of the website redesign is a community behavioral health directory that, in which we would hope to include all of the applicants and their information, so the community understands that these resources are available to them. Excellent. Okay. Any additional discussion? Good luck, and and it's it's a, it's a good thing. It's uh, you and the one percent and Commissioner Montgomery for uh, pushing and for the last three or four years. It's a uh, it's a really good start. Thanks. Thanks for your support. Hmm. Well, hopefully, everybody, this is just the beginning for better things to come. Great. Okay. With that, Beth, roll call vote. We don't have a second. Vote second. Yeah, we did. Bo seconded. <laughs> gotcha. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. Excellent. Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. All right, moving on to our report of department heads, uh, starting with the assessor's office. Hi, Darcy. Hey, commissioners, today we have an abatement for you guys to hear. It was, it's for the 2020 tax year filed by Justin Fulveig for the Fulveig Family Trust property on the west half of the southwest section 5 Farron Township. The applicant is requesting approval of his active farmer farm residence exemption. In reviewing the property for the 2020 assessments, it was found there was no assessment on the house and no farm residence application on file. The house was then placed on the tax roll and notice sent out prior to the Farron Township equalization meeting. Mr. Fulveig called and requested an application, which he did return. However, Mr. Fulveig did not return his statement of farm gross income to our office before the deadline of March 31st. As a statement is required to qualify for the active farmer application, our office denied his exemption. Uh, Mr. Fulveig did submit his statement of farm gross income in February. His income for the 2020, or sorry, his income from farming activities for 2018 was 68% of his total income and North Dakota Century Code requires a minimum of 66%. A hearing to review Mr. Fulvig's application was held by the Farron Township Board on March 2nd and was approved. Okay, and you just are looking for board approval on this as well. Right? Yeah, whatever you wish to do. Okay, what are the wishes of the board? Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to approve the uh, farm resident exemption for the Claire and Jerome Fulvig Family Revocable Trust. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? A second. Okay, second by Bo Beth. <laughs> Thank you. You bet. I can't hear. I got you. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. That's all I have today. Thanks, Darcy. Okay, communications again. Yeah. This summer, the Parks Department has quite a few events planned um, for their campsites and also um, different uh, different elements of camping, like with the seasonal sites for Blacktail Dam. Um, and so we want to try something new this summer and do a little bit more by way of advertising. Um, we've never really done much with advertising campsites or camping in general in a lot of our parks. Um, so we'd like to utilize $5,000 from the Visitor Promotion Fund to be able to um, promote tourism and camping uh, this summer at our parks. Excellent. Okay, so you just need a motion to support the spending five thousand dollars for visitor from the visitor uh, promotion fund. Yes. Okay. Please. I think it's a great idea to to get some of the advertising out. 
Is that a motion? No. I didn't know Bo was starting to talk, so I stopped. <laughs> I would make a motion to approve the spending of 5000 out of the uh, Visitor Promotion Fund for advertising for county parks. Okay, is there a second? I will second the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Mike's work. <laughs> <laughs> Any additional discussion? Hearing none, that's a roll call vote. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? <laughs> yes. Okay, motion passes. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Lindsay. Okay, County Highway and Engineering update. Is Dennis on the phone? Anybody from County Highway? Anyone? Bueller? Anyone? <laughs> okay. All right. Good update, Dennis. Oh, it is? Okay. I think it was. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Department of Motor Vehicles, DMV, Micah, yeah. good morning. 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 Um, we are just looking to get um, an amendment to our contract with the state DOT. Um, the state DOT with CARES funding has bought a bunch of kiosks for the state and an additional 54 or something, and they put an additional one in Williston in um, the um, home of economy. And they have agreed, since it will probably take away from our business a little bit, to um, share the branch fees with us out of that kiosk. Um, we've been working with the state a little bit on a contract amendment because it's very vague um, and doesn't really lay out what our what our uh, what we have to do. So um, I think we're still in the process of working on that contract. Yeah. Push to talk. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Micah said, we're still working on the contract with the state, and so I guess the idea really here is whether or not to see if this board is willing to sign an amendment allowing the kiosk and allowing our participation in the kiosk at Home of Economy. And possibly, even though the DOT is not planning on putting kiosks other places in the city of Williston, the way the contract amendment is written, if there's a possibility for them to do that, although they told me that they don't have any plans to do that right now. So, so you want a motion of support for us to get more money than we would otherwise? Yeah, I mean, we have no idea how much it right. will, you know, we have absolutely no idea so it's just kind of yeah gotcha yep yeah. and then the thing that we would really only have to do really is if we were contacted by if micah and her office were contacted by a public saying there's an issue with the kiosk at home and economy is just to call the kiosk help desk and dot and tell them there's a problem and then they would take care of fixing it really so okay so no additional responsibility necessarily other than a potential phone call or two here and there nope. yeah. And there's already a kiosk in town isn't there yep so there's already they replaced the one at um cash wise and put the new fancy one that you can do your driver's license and all that stuff, and then the one at Home of Economy, and they've also put one in, I believe it's Tioga, and in um, Crosby. So, so will we get will we get some income off of that one too? Nope, we they only get the one off of Home of Economy, and I've been trying really hard it's to get the tough. other ones. I, I wish the state would understand that the DMV is not a money making opportunity no. for us here, and and it's a service, right? And for them to find ways to to not help out it's it's real tough so yeah they started out with the kiosk wanting stick to your put guns it. karen get us something out of it because we, we need to do that we, we're not making money at the She's dmv yeah i've tried that i mean I, I asked the dot why you know because i had a conversation with or a communication with them last year about the fact that we were kind of losing money you know that wasn't really a money maker and i was really told that you got to run this like a business then really then basically cut your expenses sort of thing really and so when we got this new amendment where they were going to put another kiosk now at Home of the Economy, even though we were going to get money out of it, I said, so why are you doing this? It's like I already told you we were losing money. Well, they said that they supposedly did some sort of a study or about, you know, the possible need for it. So that's why they're sticking that in there, really. It's so with yeah. COVID, they wanted the, you know, touch. to be able to not have any touch. Um, and they wanted to put it in our office, and I told them no. So um, this is 
the next best option, I guess, for them is to put it in home of economy. I just need to add, Karen, when you say that they told you it needs to be run like a business and cut your expenses, when you run a business, you also look at the opportunities to increase your income. Put it in the lobby and get all the money. Do do they pay home of economy also then? You know, I'm not... I don't know for sure, but I would assume that they would probably have to probably have like a lease with home of economy, really, so... And the other thing that got passed by the legislature, too, that might bring us a little more income is that they gave the DMVs the ability to do driver's license stuff if they want to. Um, we haven't gotten that far with them because I don't know how much it's going to cost, how much we could possibly make if I need another person, training, all that stuff. So, I mean, they are trying to find other ways for us to make a little bit more money. But It would be nice to be one-stop shop. For sure. <laughs> so so what do we need here okay so we're actually looking for a, a motion to authorize micah to send to sign the amendment once we've negotiated with the state because the the i believe that you should probably have a, a draft copy of the amendment in your packets and that is not the amendment we're going to be signing. I'm working with DOT, well, hopefully working with DOT to shore up the terms of it because, like Micah said, it's very vague. And what they say that the DMV, our DMV branch office is going to have to do is really not reflected in the language of the amendment. So I'm wanting to make sure. I've already proposed some uh, revisions to the amendment to DOT. I just haven't heard back from them yet. So I'm just asking for a motion to authorize Micah to sign the amendment once I, we finalize it So with the DOT. Okay. Okay, so your fingers off the button, though. I'll make that a motion. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll, I'll second. second. You got that in stereo. Any additional comments? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. Steve? Yes. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay. Helen, floor is yours. I did I did email this out last night, but I'll bring you a paper copy anyway. Thank you. All right. You know that I don't always send it out ahead of time because we have changes sometimes overnight or in the morning, but I'll try and send it as I can. On the front side, you will see that we have a couple of positions we're looking to have, have filled. We had a couple of folks resign, move on to other positions. So in the facilities department, a maintenance technician, and at the youth assessment center, a youth care attendant. Okay. I would move to authorize the, uh, we'll look for help. Okay, we have a motion for the supporting the two new positions. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any additional discussion? And then Beth, roll call vote. Bo? Yes. David? Yes. Barry? Yes. Corey? Yes. Steve? Yes. Motion passes. And we have one board seat to appoint. It would be to the Williams County Special Assessment Commission. It is Norm Hansen refilling the, the seat that he's in. We had no other candidates, and Norm is willing to serve again. Okay. Do we need a motion on that? Yep. I'll make a motion to appoint Norm Hansen to the Williams County Special Assessment Commission. Is there a second? A second. Any additional discussion? Hearing none, Beth, roll call vote. David? Yes. Bo? Yes. Steve? Yes. Corey? Yes. 
Jerry? Yes. Mixing it up. Motion passes. <laughs> thank you. Uh, all right. Thank you, Ron. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? I don't believe so. I think we can adjourn. <laughs>